Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. What do East Malaysians really feel about Malaysia Day? Is it a day of celebration or a day of commiseration? If both the Sabahans and Sarawakians could turn the clock back, would they have agreed to the formation of Malaysia? I asked a few East Malaysians and a Sarawakian said, it's a holiday, that's all it is. Another said, return the oil money which Putrajaya owes us. It's our oil, but we only get 5% royalty. Nothing more has been heard about the 25% royalty payment. Our country needs development too. A young man from Sandakan said, and how many young Malaysians know about Project IC? when the demography of Sabah was changed for the worse, just because one man wanted his party to triumph in the general elections. And a native of Kota Kinabalu said, How united are we as Malaysians? To Putrajaya, we are simply the nation's vote bank. Sabah has liquefied natural gas. Sarawak produces the bulk of the oil but we are the poorest of all in Malaysia. You in Simananjung, you get rich on our natural resources and in return, what do you give us? You give us Ketuanan Melayu, Islamic extremism and many empty promises. And so, 57 years later, the people of Sabah and Sarawak are still fighting for their rights and more power to manage their own nations. Under the terms of the Malaysia Agreement of 1963, Sabah and Sarawak were equal partners to the former Federation of Malaya. However, the terms of the MA63 Agreement were neither respected nor upheld, and today both Sabah and Sarawak are still struggling to be treated as equal partners in Malaysia. Put simply, Peninsular Malaysia may have gained their independence from the British at Merdeka on 31st August 1957, but the irony is that in 1963, Sabah and Sarawak were no longer under British colonial rule, but they then became a colony administered by the federal government of Malaya. They are furious that despite their oil and timber wealth, money has been diverted to Semenanjung to build its infrastructure whilst the local people in East Malaysia struggle to keep their villages connected, amongst other things. Both Sabah and Sarawak are proud of their indigenous tribes and religions including animism. They know that one's faith or race cannot be superior to another, and they are angry that many top civil service posts are filled by West Malaysians. During his tenure as Prime Minister, Dr. Mahade Mohamad realised that the only way he and his henchmen could continue to rule the country was to alter the demography of Sabah and hence the electoral voting patterns of the nation. Fearful of losing the elections, Mahade spearheaded a project dubbed Project M, which is also known as Project IC, in the early 1990s in which it is alleged that hundreds of thousands of illegal immigrants from Philippines, and I believe also Indonesia, became naturalised citizens. The East Malaysians are a people whose ability to live in natural harmony is envied by other Malaysians, especially those in Semenanjung. Many have expressed their outrage that alleged force conversions and the Ketuanan Melayu agenda will threaten their way of life and the homogeneity of their nation. 
East Malaysians have always maintained that they are a tolerant and harmonious people. Many families are comprised of people with different faiths who sit together at the dining table to celebrate Christmas, Gawai, Kaamatan, which is the Harvest Festival, Chinese New Year, Hari Raya, Deepavali, and Vesa, the Buddhist New Year. They have no qualms about celebrating, eating, or drinking whatever they wish in one another's company. Some East Malaysian friends who work in Kuala Lumpur and Ipoh are surprised by how little we know about East Malaysia. One said that when she first arrived in the city, in KL, she was shocked by the dress codes and eating restrictions to which she was subjected. She was often mistaken for a Malay and quizzed during the fasting month for eating in public and for attending Sunday Mass. Another said that working and living in West Malaysia was like being in a foreign country with demands that people of other faiths respect Muslims only. Respect should work both ways. And she was shocked that children in schools were not allowed in the school canteen during the fasting month. So she asked, what happened to Article 11, which guarantees Malaysians freedom of religion? And another of her friends said, does anyone remember the Allah issue and how East Malaysians were treated badly? When a former Minister of Education visited East Malaysia, he was more concerned about increasing the number of religious teachers, the Ustads and Ustazas, for schools in Sarawak. East Malaysians do not need the warped interpretation of religion from the conservative Ustads and Ustazas from West Malaysia, who are polluting the minds of young Sarawakians and Sabahans. Now, when it comes to education, Sarawak leaders have emphasised the importance of English. Many parents complain that teachers from Semenanjung, Malaysia, who are posted to Sabah and Sarawak, can barely speak English, much less teach it. So, one of the other things they want to know about is, what has happened about the Sulu threat? The government seems to have gone quiet about the takeover of two Petronas assets and what are they going to do about the other threats mentioned by the Sulus? Sabahans are worried but Putrajaya's silence does not leave many Sabahans reassured or feeling confident. Another thing is this, it has been 46 years since the double six air crash which killed several members of the Sabah State Assembly including Fuad Stephens, the Sabah Chief Minister. Putrajaya has refused to entertain requests by Sabah leaders for the report of the Nomad airplane crash to be released. Why? The Australian government will not release their findings either, so they don't want to upset Putrajaya apparently. The people of Sabah and the relatives of the victims of the crash need closure. Like their cousins in West Malaysia, the East Malaysians are also angry with their leaders who have been pushing their own selfish interests and not the people's. The recent Rosmah Mansour solar energy corruption case is one such scandal. Others wonder why a former chief minister of Sabah was acquitted, fully acquitted, of his charges of corruption. Others wonder when a former chief minister of Sarawak will be investigated for his alleged corruption. His important wife is now a naturalized Sarawakian, but many people from the interiors, interior areas of Sarawak and Sabah are stateless. There is rising discontent among both Sabahans and Sarawakians. Will Putrajaya address all these issues? Thank you for listening and Salamat Hari Malaysia. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like, 
and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.